Hello and welcome to another Wilf Electronic webinar. My name is Markus Eberle and I will moderate this webinar today. We are very pleased that you took the time to participate in our webinar today. The topic of today's webinar is Sunset of 2 and 3G. Accelerate migration of your cellular IoT products into 5G. Our speaker today is Ravindra Singh, who is working as product manager in the field of wireless connectivity and sensors for our cellular modules. He will hold today's webinar and also answer your questions. Yeah, just before we start the webina uh, webinar, I would like to point out one thing. You will be muted during this webinar. This means that you can't ask us questions via microphone. Nevertheless, you have the opportunity to ask us questions anytime via the chat function. You will find that in the webinar control panel. The webinar will be about 30 minutes long, and then afterwards we have scheduled 10 to 15 minutes for a little Q&A session. And if we don't have the time to answer all your questions now in the live webinar, we will answer them later on via email. In the next few days, you will also get the link to the presentation and to the recording of this webinar. But now I want to hand over to our speaker, Ravindra, and I wish you an exciting webinar. Thank you, Marcos, for the introduction. I hope now you can see my slides and me. I am Ravinder Singh, working as product manager for cellular modules here in Birth Electronic ISOs. And today's topic is sunset of 2G and 3G, accelerate migration of your cellular products into 5G. Because of bandwidth, now I will switch off my webcam, but later in question and answer session, I will again switch on. So now first have a look into the agenda. Today's agenda is, uh, first we'll discuss about IoT connections outlook. Then we will see why are 2G and 3G being sunset. Later 2G and 3G phasing out plan worldwide. IoT connectivity options. And why cellular connectivity? What is the advantages of cellular connectivity over normal or any other connectivity solution? Then we'll see the evaluation from 1G to 5G. Later in the presentation, I will explain at broader level LT network architecture, comparisons of LTM and NVIOT, and we will also discuss Adrestia 1 key features and cellular certification processes, and later we will have question and answer session. So as per this Ericsson report, this is the IoT connections outlook. As you can see in the past, 2G and 3G connections has grown a lot. But now if you'll see from 2022 onwards, either 2G and 3G connections are stagnant or they are decreasing drastically. While on the other hand, new technologies like NVIoT and CATM are increasing and it is expected that they will increase further in future exponentially. Same goes with the LT and 5G technologies, mainly for broadband IoT and critical IoT, 4G and 5G. They are also expected to grow in near future. You can see in this slide. Now the question comes is why are 2G and 3G being phased out? There are many reasons, but I have listed down the main reasons. First is the evaluation of technology. So in terms of performance, 4G and 5G solutions represent an improvement over the performance in terms of coverage, power consumption, bandwidth, latency, reliability. So 2G and 3G were not designed for low power wide area network or IoT kind of applications. 
hence 2G and 3G does not fit for battery powered IoT devices. Other reason is efficient utilization of frequency spectrum. Wherever 2G and 3G are phasing out, they will be replaced by far more capable technologies in terms of bandwidth, throughput, latency, reliability, and power consumption demand. So to deploy more efficient technologies, 2G and 3G needs to be sunset. In other words, the frequency spectrum which will be released by 2G and 3G phase out will be utilized by 4G and 5G technologies. As we have already seen in our previous slide, demand for new technologies, demand for new technologies such as LTM, NVIOT and 5G is going up while the demand for 2G and 3G is drastically coming down. So it is not a business case for the network operators to maintain 2G and 3G networks. Now we'll see in this slide the 2G and 3G phase out plan worldwide. In Europe, you can already see that Deutsche Telekom has already shut down 3G networks last year. Vodafone has already announced that in Europe, they will not have 2G 2025 onwards. Same goes with the Switzerland. They have already couple of uh, operators have already switched off. Sweden is also similar where they have said that 3G will be shut down by 2025. In USA, Mexico and Canada situation is same where either some of the operators have already switched off 2G and 3G or they have the plans to switch off. Like AT&T has the plans by end of this year, they will switch off 3G also. In Asia, also the picture is same where operators are deciding to switch off 2G, either 2G or 3G by 2023. And in fact, in Japan, Taiwan, South Korea, and Singapore, they have already switched off 2G and 3G. Same goes with the Australia and New Zealand, where many operators have decided to switch off the 2G and 3G by 2025. So in broader level, if you'll see, after 2025, it is expected that there will not be much coverage for 2G and 3G technologies, and it is expected that only 4G and 5G will grow in number of connections. Now, in that case, what are all connectivity options you have? You have two choice. One is in unlicensed spectrum, like 868 megahertz or 915 megahertz or 2.5 gigahertz where most of the technologies operates nfc bluetooth zigbee wi-fi wire pass so what you have to consider is whether you want the short range connectivity and what is the demand for low data for the data rates in terms of either it's low data rate or the higher data rates in the other hand, we have the licensed spectrum where the cellular technologies comes into picture. So for higher data rates, you can choose LT or 5G, while for low to medium data rates, there are two new standards from 3GPP, LTM and NVIOT. They both are in the space of cellular IoT. Now, why cellular connectivity or what is the advantages choosing the cellular over non-cellular technologies? One thing is global coverage and roaming. Cellular networks are available globally because we are already using them in our mobile phones day-to-day -day life. So global coverage of cellular technologies makes companies to deploy their IoT devices globally 
in addition global presence of cellular networks enables roaming and mobility next is secure and reliable transmission cellular technologies have default security procedures enabled and these procedures make sure only certified subscribed and authenticated device can access the mobile network for data sms and voice services these technology are the standardized technologies third generation partnership project or the 3gpp develops these standards for cellular communication and these standards are internationally agreed standards device manufacturers and network service providers follow cellular communication standards so this is not a property technology where you have the risk that if company goes down the standards also will not do well network quality of service licensed spectrum is assigned exclusively to network service providers for independent uses in this licensed spectrum service providers deploy his network and iot device has to subscribe for data or sms service to network service provider so they are contextually bound to provide quality of service for subscriber so here first network operators wise the frequency spectrum from the governments then they deploy the technology in that frequency spectrum and then the users go and sign the contract with the network providers and they pay with the fee or the tariffs to the network providers so since you are signing the contract with them they are contractually bound to provide you quality of service or the coverage now certified device access certified device access the cellular network and this enables efficient utilization of licensed spectrum and it minimizes the risk we will discuss later in our presentation what this certification means and security connect connectivity and strong authentication of iot devices now we'll see in this slide evaluation from 1g to 5g 1g mainly was started in 1973 as analog communication meant only for mainly voice communication later the evaluation continued and they introduced the 2g with new feature called sms or short message service so 2g was capable of voice as well as sms evaluation continued and there was gprs and egprs which was part of between 2g and 3g are considered as 2.5g also we are only with the minimum data rates data was also supported to enhance the data rates evolution continued for the 3g and the and 3g is also known as umts so in 1998 3g or umts was deployed to enhance the data rate and the evolution continued for the lt or the long term evolution and it was deployed in 2008 the here main purpose was to send the voice as a data so to send the data voice as a data we need higher data rates and after lte the evaluation continued and the standard have two paths one is for higher data rates where you have lte cat4 cat12 kind of uh, connectivity solutions and these solutions support 5g use cases for enhanced broadband mobile broadband and ultra reliable low latency communications enhanced mobile broadband is the one use case from 5g and its main requirements is high bandwidth high cost and high mobility the other use case is ultra reliable low latency communications their main requirements or features is ultra low latency high reliable and highly secured 
the other path which is low to medium data rates and this is the important for the iot kind of applications here 3gpp came up with two different protocols or technologies known as catm or ltem and nviot these were meant on mainly for ultra low to medium data rates these are ideal for iot applications they have broad coverage and ultra low power consumption this will also fulfill one of the huge case of 5g massive machine type communications or mmtc high device density low bandwidth low cost now on broader level we will see the cellular connectivity network architecture so here you have a device which is equipped with the cellular connectivity this device sends the data to nearest base station base station forwards the data to core network and core network eventually sends data to cloud platform to give an example this is one machine which is equipped with the device which collects the sensors data like temperature pressure and using the cellular connectivity this device sends this data to nearest base station base station forwards this data to core network and eventually this data goes to your iot platform or the cloud platform where you can see those data you can predict and you can do the predictive maintenance you can analyze the data you can visualize the data and this is one application for predictive maintenance now considerations while choosing the right connectivity which type of the technology is the right one for a specific application the optimal technology choice will always depends on use case specific constraints what there are few questions which will help to determine which type of technology is the right for your application one is what are the applications demand in terms of data rate whether it needs higher data rate or lower data rate what are the applications demand in terms of latency can your application accept higher latency or it needs lower latency where will it be deployed in the country or the region where you are planning to deploy your iot devices does it has the coverage for the technology which you are considering what are the requirements in terms of roaming across networks what are the certification requirements and certification cost in cellular the certification part is complex in terms of money and time so it it cost a lot so you have to take care what are our requirements for certifications is the application mobile or stationary do you need the connected mode mobility or not so there are many factors we have seen from previous questions such as data rate latency availability of technology coverage mobility longevity and certification cost needs to be considered when deciding whether to migrate iot applications from legacy 2g 3g networks to 4g or 5g technology so the applications requiring low power wide area network connectivity will be perfectly served by 5g ready ltm and nviot while the applications with higher data rate and voice requirements 4g cat1 cat4 cat12 and 5g are suitable so it is safe to say that 4g and 5g are ready to be deployed today and that it will be available in 
foreseeable future. They are not going to be phased out in at least in foreseeable future. Now we'll compare LTM and NVIOT. As you can see from this slide, NVIOT has lower bandwidth of 180 kilohertz and LTM has the higher bandwidth of 1.08 megahertz. Since NVIOT has lower bandwidth, it offers lower data rates also. So maximum uplink peak data rate which NVIOT offers is 158 kbps. On the other hand, CATM offers up to 1 Mbps of data rates. Maximum downlink peak data rate, NVIOT offers 127 kbps, while LTM offers up to 588 kbps. Voltage support, NVIOT as a technology does not support Voltage, while LTM supports Voltage. But what I could see from the market is though the technology supports the Volte, but network operators are not planning or not configuring Volte for CATM. Latency NVIOT has lower bandwidth and lower data rates, hence it has high latency. While the other hand, LTM offers higher bandwidth and higher data rates, so it has low latency. Mobility support, NVIOT does not support connected mode mobility, while LTM has the connected mode mobility also. For the network operators, where they can deploy the technologies, NVIOT, since it needs just 180 kilohertz of bandwidth, it can be deployed in band with the existing LT, it can be deployed in the LT guard bands, or it can be deployed as a standalone technology. While LTM is deployed with the existing invent existing LT technology. Now here there are a couple of examples where NVIOT and LTM and LT higher cat 5G can fit into. So NVIOT mainly monitoring smart city, smart buttons, metering, predictive maintenance. So the main characteristics of NVIOT kind of applications, low power mode are critical here. So longer battery life. NVIOT applications mostly transmits small data. NVIOT is lower in complexity, hence lower in cost. On the other hand, when you talk about LT, CAT, higher CAT or the 5G, applications are vehicle telematics, smart video, campus networks, autonomous driving. So they scale up in complexity, they have very higher data rates for the throughput and they have higher power consumption. Between these two technologies, it is LTM, where since it offers the connectivity, connected mode mobility, so it can be fit for tracking kind of applications, healthcare, wearables, smart home, safety notifications, device control, and consumer electronics. Now, worth electronics offers multiple IoT connectivity options. They are mainly divided in two parts. One is short to medium range, typical up to 1000 meters. And these technologies or these solutions are into unlicensed spectrum like Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and we have some proprietary protocols also. The other hand, we have the long range, typical when the range is more than 1000 meter, we have in license spectrum cellular module called Industria 1, which supports LTKTM and NVIOT. For more details, you can log into our website and can see complete portfolio what we offer 
in terms of wireless connectivity and sensors. Now we'll talk about Adestia One key features. Adestia One supports both LTM and NVIoT. What is the benefits of dual mode? It enables international multi-regional coverage. So let's say in some countries, LTM is not available, then module will select NVIoT and vice versa. Somewhere NVIoT is not available, then it will select the CATM or you can also configure in either of the technologies. Because LTM and NVIoT both are uh, new technologies and every country does not have coverage for both of the technologies. Some countries have opted for deploying NVIoT while the other countries are have only CATM coverage. Positioning, Adestia One has integrated GNSS and this supports GPS and GLONASS satellite systems. This allows GNSS positioning for asset management applications where infrequent position updates are required. What extra we offer? We have one, Adestia One has integrated MCU and this MCU is exclusively for customers application firmware development. So Adrestia One has two separate MCU, one for modem, which is not, which cannot be used for applications, while the another MCU, ARM Cortex M4, one MB of flash, 256 KB of RAM, is exclusively for application development. Now cellular certification process. There are two ways to go to the market. One is the normal cellular certification procedure where you need three different types of certifications. One is the regulatory certification. Like for Europe, you need CE. For UK, you need UKCE. For USA, you need FCC. This regulatory certification are mainly for any type of RF device. If you want to sell in certain countries, they have the requirements, you have to comply with them. The other second type of certification is industry specific certification. This certification like GCF is the major requirements, especially in Europe for the network operators to get the connectivity from them. When you have this certification, then the third type of certification which required is the mobile operator specific certifications like Deutsche Telekom, Vodafone, at and This is the normal process where you need to do all three types of certifications. While the other hand, we have a strong partnership with Deutsche Telekom and I'm happy to share here that our module Adestia One is already certified from Deutsche Telekom. So if you take our Adestia One module and connectivity from Deutsche Telekom, you just need to do regulatory certification, which is CE for Europe. And you don't have to take care for industry specific certification like GCF, which is quite costly and further device level certification for Deutsche Telekom. So what we offer, we have LTM and NB-IoT supported module, which we have already talked about, which has integrated MCU, embedded GNSS, and the size, including all, it's just 13.4 by 14.6. It supports multi-band, LTCATM, and NB-IoT. Connectivity, we have partnership with Deutsche Telekom, where they, IoT SIM cards will be from Deutsche Telekom if you want to make use of certification. IoT platform, you can choose any of the public cloud. You can take your data anywhere, AWS, 
Google, Azure, anywhere. And this is the link from where you can see our partnership with Deutsche Telekom and this is the joint portal through which you can order your SIM cards. These are the abbreviations we have used across our presentations. So I have kept them in one slide. So now I hope we already know there are not only one way, but many ways to send the sensor data to cloud using different technologies in license spectrum, unlicensed spectrum, short range, long range. We have seen the 2G and 3G phase out plan worldwide. And which type of technology is the right one for a specific application in terms of data rate, mobility, latency, etc. And why cellular connectivity? What to do with different cellular technology? Whether you should use the 4G higher cut technologies or the LTM and NVIOT. Certifications are important, they are costly. And what the benefits we will bring with Adrestia One and Deutsche Telekom partnership? So we have a strong partnership which saves a lot in terms of certifications. Thank you for your attention. We hope you learn something new to make business. Now we welcome any questions. Yeah, Marcus, so over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Ravindra, from your side and yeah, for your interesting presentation. As you have mentioned, now we would like to turn our attention to your questions and we wait until some questions come in. You can send us the questions with the chat function and you will find the chat function in the control panel. And just a hint before we begin, um, if we can't answer your question now in the live webinar, we will answer it later on via email. So Ravindra, then let's start with the first question. Um, how to decide which technology, LTEM or NB-IoT, and yeah, what which shall be used for the end product? Okay, thanks, Marcus. It's a very interesting question. So if we'll see in this slide, what we are talking about is if your application's requirement is only transmit small data, it does not need to need the connected mode mobility. In that case, NVIOT is perfect fit. While the other hand, if you need the mobility along with higher data rate, then LTM is the better choice. And if you'll see in the previous slide also, I have explained that maximum data rates for LTM is up to one Mbps. So higher data rates if you need in uplink and downlink directions then go for LTM while if it can be fulfilled with lower data rates go for NVIOT. Okay thank you very much for your explanation Ravindra. So then let's go on with the next question and yeah it's about um, yeah question is how is the future development of LTEM and NB-IoT and what is planned in the 5G standards? Okay that's very again interesting question. If you'll see here 5G has three different use cases. Two use cases are met with the higher data rates or higher cat connectivity solutions like enhanced mobile broadband and ultra reliable low latency communication. But there is third use case which is massive machine type communication which will be covered or which will be continued in 5G with the CATM and NVIOT technologies. So I can say that this is safe to assume that CATM and NVIOT are future proof technologies which are enabled in 5G also. Okay, thank you very much for the explanation. Then we have a look at the next question. 
So, ah, yeah, okay. So, if Deutsche Telekom is in Germany, then what should I do in France, for example? Okay. Yes, that's correct and very nice question. So, in that case, what happens is that Deutsche Telekom has multiple roaming partners. So, for your example, in France, Deutsche Telekom has the roaming partnership with Orange. So, if you buy the connectivity from Deutsche Telekom, those SIM cards will work using Orange network. So, Deutsche Telekom has the roaming partners in different countries, and based on that, they will serve their customers. Okay. Um, so, just a hint, I think we have a good overview there in our product guide. So, Yes. Okay, perfect. So if there are any questions, please feel free to send us an email or um, yeah, then we can give you the link directly. Okay, then Ravindra, let's go on with the next question. Um, there was also another question in the meantime of the um, webinar. I think it was somewhere around um, slide nine, but I'm not really sure. So question is, what is VOLTE? Okay, VOLTE is the voice over LTE. So as I told that evaluation, I will take you through that slide. Evaluation of LTE main purpose was to how to send this data or the voice using data. So Volte was the one solution which was developed using IMS network through which you can send your voice as a data. So Volte was introduced in mainly in LTE advance and now it continued in all the future technologies. Okay, thank you very much for the explanation. Yeah, then let's go on. I think we have still some few more minutes to go through a few other questions. So Ravindra, do you think when 5G will be more popular than 4G? And um, I mean 4G sunset. Okay, so 5G, there are two different, 5G is, they have divided in two parts. One is the standalone and another is the non-standalone. So what non-standalone means is that deployment of 5G base stations with the core network which will be used from 4G. So that deployment is happening fast, but the actual 5G deployment will start when they will have complete new setup, including base stations and core network. And it is, uh, it is as already started, and I expecting that from next year onwards, you will see much more utilization or number of connections growing for 5G. Okay, thank you very much, Ravindra. Then next question, um, what are the costs for SIM cards for IoT connections? Okay, so it depends on the operator, of course, but for Deutsche Telekom, let me go take you through one of the site through which I can show you. So this is the portal which we have developed part with the partnership with Deutsche Telekom. So if you can see here, the charges which we have derived is based on the message based pricing. It is not volume based pricing where if you'll send 120 messages per day, this is the pricing for that. And one good thing is that if you'll order our evaluation kit and you order one SIM card from Deutsche Telekom, you will get it free. Later on, based on your requirements, how many connections you need, the pricing is written here. So you can check the website. I have provided the link in our presentation. Okay, 
then thank you very much. So then just a hint from my side, you will get the link to the presentation as well as to the recording of this webinar only in the next few days. We will send you an email with that links. Okay, then let's go on. And I think we have time for one more question. Um, Ravindra, what carries what carriers are supported in US? Okay. So in the US, uh, I can show you here. If you'll go in the portal, there is this developers and NBI roaming network information. If you'll click there, you will find complete list of roaming partners which Twice Telecom has in different countries. So let's say in European countries, LTM in Europe, they have these roaming partners like in France, they have Orange. There was one question that how it can be used in France, Spain, Denmark. So all the Europe countries, then same goes NBIOT in Europe. They have roaming partners. You can see the list here. And this is the one LTM and NBIOT outside of Europe. So for USA specific question, these are the two partners. One is the T-Mobile US and another is the AT&T. So that answers. And this list is available in our product guide also. Or you can visit the website for latest because this list keep on changing as and when they add the roaming partners. Okay, thank you very much Ravindra for the explanation. So as it was fast, I would say one more last question. Um, what certification has your module addressed here? Okay, so as of now we have is the C certification and we have the certification from Deutsche Telekom. We are in process to get the FCC as well as GCF. Okay, yeah, then I would say we are already finished with our webinar. So um, if there are any questions left right now, we will answer them later on via email. And if you still have any questions left, also just email us at webinarteam at we-online.com. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed our webinar. Also many thanks again to you Ravindra for your time today. Thank you very much. Yeah. You're welcome. So thank you and I hope you will hear us at the next webinar and I can welcome you again and I wish you a good day. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.